Welcome to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the approximately weekly show in which I, your host, Reynard Wilson, delve into the murky and mysterious world of one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he's been described as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. And uh, if you don't know him, well, just watch this channel because we do loads of stuff about Mark Steele, but because he's hilarious. He's, he's one of the, the least self-aware conspiracy theorists you'll ever meet anywhere. And the great thing about Mark is that you can meet him because he spends a lot of his time touring the United Kingdom and some other countries as well, trying to spread his message of conspiracy gospel. Uh, but Mark is upset because not everyone seems to understand what he's trying to say. Right, when I do my talks from the country, I can see people, right? There's so much information, there's so much intel. There'll be very, very few of them in that room who can take it in. Oh, Mark, I'm so sorry to hear that people have difficulty understanding you. But maybe for the viewers of this channel, and I'd like to think that this channel has some of the most highly educated viewers on all of YouTube, perhaps you could provide a little summary of what it is you're going around the country preaching. The activation, the control management system in the streetlight will allow the pulse modulated frequency of the bare element LEDs, the, the 450 nanometers, which will then go down the optic nerve and activate anybody who's had that PCR test. So it drops a neural link into your brain, out of the carbon nanotube, and guess what? Well, it's going to be fun, I can tell you now. I'm sure you'll agree. That was a very clear and concise and entirely believable message. So anybody who doesn't get what Mark's saying must be some kind of dummy, right? <laughs> uh, but Mark, what's the impact of your message? It's going to be fun. It, what's going to happen is going to be, well, not, I wouldn't say biblical, but it's going to be something you've probably seen on the telly. It's going to be somewhere between what we see on the telly and something biblical. And that region in between the two, well, we call that fun. And, uh, you know, what is the most fun and possibly also biblical thing that you might see on telly? Well, in Mark's opinion, it's a zombie apocalypse. It's called the zombie preparedness bill. I'm not making this up. Go and have a look what the zombie preparedness bill is. Now, why are they doing all this zombie preparedness? Is it, uh, you know, is there some specific reason for it? There actually is a document all about zombie preparedness, and it's, uh, it's written by the Department of Defense. It's a real thing. You can Google for it. it it's actually a training document. It's, it's there to help the senior management of the Department of Defense learn how to behave in an emergency situation. Now, the, the writers of this document could have used a, a realistic situation, such as, let's say, uh, North Korea launches some missiles, or, or uh, let's say, a, a plague or a famine. But they decided to use this fictional scenario because they thought that nobody would be stupid enough to miss... <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yes, they didn't anticipate Mark. Um, Mark is stupid enough, aren't you? Yeah. Mark thinks this is a real document. It, he just had to look on Google. It is a fabricated lie. Like that global warming. I mean, I've seen this stuff down in Hawaii. You can see they're using directional weapons. You can see the burning of the trees from the inside out. You can see it all, you know. I mean, I've seen a cracking picture the other day. There's actually a circle, an exact circle in a field where the, it's burning in a circle. That has to be electromagnetic radiation emissions. Let me explain how Mark Steele operates. He looks on the news and, and finds the tragedy or disaster of the day, and then thinks of a reason to associate that with whatever he's paranoid about. So right now, as I'm recording this, in the news, there's, uh, there's wildfires in Maui. Uh, a normally wet tropical island has been gripped by drought, and the whole place is a tinderbox. And tragically, 
huge swathes of land and a number of cities have just burnt down. It's an, it's an absolutely appalling story, but not too appalling for Mark to try and take advantage of it. He wants you to think that the wildfires on Maui were caused by some kind of directional energy weapon. And he posted this video of some kind of partially burnt city on the island as proof of something. I, I, I don't know what, but uh, isn't it rather ghoulish the way Mark works? He, he'll take advantage of anybody's suffering if he thinks it can prove his pathetic little point. Like the images in uh, Korea that we had where the cable drums were actually burning from the inside out. Mark never shared this video of a cable drum burning from the inside out, but anybody who works with electrical cable knows that that's not such an unusual thing. If you put too much current through a drum of cable, well, the, the bit that gets hottest is the innermost bit. So yeah, your thing will burn from the inside out and it might even create a short circuit somewhere in the inside because of overheating and melting the insulation. A lot of Mark's complaints are, are really based on his misunderstanding of the way technical stuff works because unlike how Mark claims to be. He, he claims to be an inventor and a technologist and a weapon specialist, but the reality is he's never had any technical education. He's never worked in a technical role and he doesn't have a clue. But then it's due to the dielectric properties inside that cable because dielectric properties are it's where the, you capture the energy within a field. Because Mark's never studied these subjects, you often find him using words in, in quite unusual ways. Take, for example, the word dielectric. It, it's something he says quite a lot, and, and I'm fairly sure he has no idea what it means. In this context, he seems to be suggesting that the dielectric properties of a material might allow him to target some kind of radiation. And if you knew those properties, you could target it in a clever way that, that might cause some kind of resonance and, and amplification might occur. But that's not what the word dielectric means. Roughly speaking, the dielectric constant of an insulator is how polarizable it is. And you care about that if you're trying to manufacture capacitors and you know, certain electronic instruments or components that rely on polarizing an insulator. But for the rest of us, it doesn't really matter so much. Uh, it's, it's not really a thing. Uh, it certainly isn't something that is relevant to the business of broadcasting radio signals or, or telecommunications. It, it's just another weird thing that, that Mark's picked up and, and he repeats because he's used to operating in a world where nobody challenges him. If you want to do a quick experiment, don't do it by the way. Put a grape, half a grape, go and check on the internet. You can see, just call it, it's the grape microwave radiation experiment. A ionization and plasma created within the orbital of the internal part of the grape. This is actually perfectly safe, despite what Mark has just said. All you do is you take two grapes, put them touching each other inside a microwave oven, and then switch the microwave oven on. And after a few seconds, you see some sparks, a little bit of plasma where the two grapes are touching each other. What could it mean? It's an interesting experiment. And that's how you know that microwave radiation can cause ionization. No. That's how we know that Mark is confused about basic concepts in science, because the microwave radiation is not causing any kind of ionization to the grape. All that's happening is that the grapes together are acting as a weirdly specific sort of antenna for the, the microwave radiation. And, and you're getting a spark between the two grapes. And sparks, yes, they're a kind of plasma, and plasmas can ionize things, but the microwave radiation does not ionize anything. So uh, unless your body is made from two grapes and you live inside a microwave oven, then I don't think there's anything from this experiment that applies to you personally. You be careful with that, and you be careful with police officers with uh, face recognition cameras, because they could be configured to damage your eyesight. That's why on a demo, make sure you've got your protective eyewear on. You if you ever wondered why it is that Mark Steele 
always wears sunglasses in public. Well, that's your answer. He thinks it's to protect himself from the microwave signals which are beamed out by security cameras that are operated by the police. It, it, it's that, that's, that's what he actually believes. He thinks that optical cameras emit microwave rays. So when Liberty went to court over the facial recognition in Wales, uh, Big Brother Watch went to court over the re facial recognition. Why not talk about the, health, the detrimental health effects for an uninsurable, from uninsurable battlefield-derived technology? Mark is very upset that the activist groups who campaign against facial recognition and public use of cameras don't endorse his nonsense wackaloon theories. Well, nobody does. Not even the kinds of people who are generally against 5G. Most of those people think Mark is crazy too. Take, for example, legal action against 5G. Do you remember those guys? Well, they were the people who earlier this year lost spectacularly in court because of their nonsense theories uh, about how 5G caused everything from cancer to, to coughs. Well, they all thought Mark Steele was nuts as well. He, Mark Steele is too nuts even for other nutters. Nearly 30 minutes in now, and I can tell you now there's an awful lot of information that people on here and people who see the BitChute channel ha will have to go away and start to investigate. And then you see you then become ambassadors of getting information out. And I would like to think that from today onwards, we will all become ambassadors of Mark Steele's Getting the Information Out program. There really is so much information for us all to share, such as uh, the fact that if you place two grapes together on a microwave dish and then switch it on, and then when you observe the spark, you too can freak out like Mark Steele evidently did and shout, ah, ionization, I've seen some ionization. And everyone can look upon it in maybe horror or dismay, depending on what their predilection is towards this particular situation. Uh, and you'll have done your bit to share Mark Steele's message. But perhaps if you are uh, somebody who lives in the United States, maybe you could share the, the video of Hawaii burning down and, and, and then repeat Mark's claim that this is actually caused by a directional energy weapon. If they ask you, well, where is it and why? Mm, we'll have to go back to Mark Steele and, and maybe get a little bit more of that precious, precious information because he seems to have not mentioned that very important detail. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he'll tell us in a future episode or maybe he won't because he might just move on to the next disaster and have completely forgotten about the uh, rather repulsive things he said just now. Anyway, if you have been sufficiently delighted, I, I bid you goodbye. And I would love to see you all in one week's time for another exciting, thrill-packed, fun-filled adventure that I like to call Mind of Steel.